pictured here is John Locke. So he's a 17th century English philosopher and uh, one of the great thinkers of the Enlightenment. Uh, many call him the father of liberalism, some call him the daddy of liberalism, but it's not encouraged. Um, he tried to date while the plague was going on, so good for him. But as you can see, dating in the 17th century, it's a way to move upward in social class. Uh, it's a good distraction from the plague and also will most likely result in death. Now I'd like to compare it to dating in the 21st century. Um, so here's an example of a text I got. Uh, there's multiple texts a few months ago. Here's a guy named Max saying, uh, hey, smoke weed, then breen fest, uh, 2.40 a.m. Then a month later, hey, want to watch Star Wars and smoke pot? I'll pay for Uber, whatever. Uh, and then about uh, a month later again, yeah, want to come smoke weed and watch movies with me. So as you can see, dating is always hard. Um, but uh, let's continue on here. Um, but well, notice that there are some similarities. It's also a way to explore new parts of your city late at night. Uh, it's a good distraction from your anxiety about being alone and will most likely result in death. <laughs> now, before we go forward, um, I want to also just introduce myself. Um, I thought if I was going to talk about um, a book of relationships, I should also uh, be pretty honest about my relationship history. So here's a quick breakdown. Um, Right here, we have, um, in the largest corner, we have guys who claim to be feminists but won't commit. Then in uh, the green area, we have nice guys who like Mark Marin. Then we have guys who make me pay for coffee. And then in the red, we have guys who vape. I'm really happy, though, that I started reading philosophy um, because it has had a great effect on my personal life as we'll see in the next slide. It's an inverse graph. As you can see, the amount of trash boys over time has decreased. So I uh, highly recommend everyone read philosophy. But you know, I want to give credit where credit is due. And I think one of um, the greatest men who first influenced me when I started reading philosophy was Immanuel Kant. Uh, he was, uh, look at that guy. He was uh, an 18th century philosopher. Uh, he argued that reason was the source of morality and not emotion. He believed that the human mind created the structure of human exploration and experience. And he was essentially a very uptight dude, like wouldn't like dogs in sweaters. Um, and I remember reading once that Kant would have been the greatest phenomenon of mankind if he had um, been able to feel love, which made me want to write this book in the first place because I just thought it was so sad and really funny that this guy was like so close to being perfect but couldn't figure out how to date anyone um which made me want to write a bunch of breakup letters um so then we we're, there we have kant um and then i started thinking about david hume oh there we go i just learned how to do powerpoint <laughs> uh there's david hume uh he's a scottish 18th century philosopher and he was a sentimentalist who believed that ethics were based on emotion rather than abstract moral uh, principles. And he's the kind of guy who wants to know how you're feeling all the time and like really values Nora Ephron movies. Um, so that's David, uh, David Hume. And in a way, both, <laughs> I did it again, both, uh, both Hume and Kant are actually, um, they have opposing philosophies and they're both great in their own way. Um, but would actually be like really great in a rom-com movie, uh, specifically Bridget Jones' Diary. But instead, I think we could have Hugh Grant as David Hume and Colin Firth as Immanuel Kant. I also learned Photoshop. Um, <laughs> but instead of going after Renee Zellweger, they'll just be going after how to live uh, ethically and morally. <laughs> uh, it won't be as sexy, but we'll see, maybe with the right cast. So there's Bridget Jones. But then there are also a lot of other philosophers who um, inspired me throughout this book. We got Nietzsche over there. He had a very hard time finding love. He was a 19th century philosopher, well known for claiming that God is dead. And also in 1882, he proposed to Lou Salome, who was the first female psychoanalyst, several times, and she rejected him every time. And then he ran away and wrote Thus Spoke Zarathustra for 10 days because he was super depressed. So rejection is very productive. And then he sort of sent these 10 rules of writing to her and then she just published them but never actually dated him. So I hope that makes up for it. But that is what inspired me to write um, one of the breakup letters from Nietzsche. So I'll read one now. And this is an illustration by Hallie Bateman. Dear Lou, below you will find 10 reasons why I believe we should be married. 
One, I know I've proposed to you twice before and you refuse, but I'm positive that third time's the charm. You're the first female psychoanalyst, which I totally respect. You get along well with Freud, so I already know you're great with my friends. You're my favorite intellectual protege. You love writing about the erotic nature of women and how sexual difference runs deeper than economics. I'm very into that and also enjoy anything erotic. Uh, we're both big Ibsen fans. You always smell nice. I adore your uh, boyish curiosity and rugged complexion. We both share a passion for critiquing reason and rejecting objective truth. And I am so alone. Um, <laughs> and uh, next we'll go to his uh, breakup letter, which is a little harsher. Do you remember that day with the ducks? It was cold and rainy and the foreboding sky tried to seal our fate with each gust of wind. We hurried underneath the nearest awning where we came upon a family of ducks nestled together. And I remember looking at you and thinking, this can't last long. But whatever does, listen to me when I say that just as a bee abandons its flower once pollination is complete, you too must on move onward or go under. One day soon you will meet a man and he will rise like a phoenix from the ashes, and it is my greatest hope that he will not give you syphilis.